What is up, everybody? This is I'm Jermant, and uh, you might be wondering, dude, why are we looking at your desktop and not uh, some quirky overlay in StarCraft 2? Well, because I wanted to do a video for you guys on how to set up XSplit to stream in 720p. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the types of processors you're going to need. I want to talk about how to set up your Broadcast tab and your Tools tab and your View tab to set up and stream to YouTube in 720p. I've had one or two people ask me about it. Um, one RL friend and then one guy on the internet. So I wanted to talk about that a little bit today. And it's not very hard. The first thing I want to talk about, though, is the processor you're going to need. I'm not going to pretend to know a lot about processors. Um, everything I know comes from this thread right here. By the gun run, actually, on Team Liquid. So you go to teamliquid.net and you search in the search bar um, the gun run it's actually the only thread by the gun run so shut up windows All right. um, so what's going to happen is you're going to want one of these processors faster is better starcraft 2 is a resource hog as um, gun run points out right here C cpu hog you're going to want something uh, my processor is somewhere in this range right here I have a 3.1 gigahertz with an octcore AMD FX so and that runs it just fine typically I'm gonna tackle you Windows um, but so you're just gonna want a processor that can run SC2 on ultra and stuff like that well your graphics card determines the ultra but you're gonna want something that can run SC2 flawlessly with some power left over and that's gonna be what's used by streaming because XSplit is very um, CPU heavy all right, so I'm gonna fight this. Um, sorry about that, guys. <laughs> um, so I'm not gonna talk anything about um, how to set up down here, how to set up your scenes, because if you're watching this, I'm gonna assume you know how to do that. If you don't, post a question in the comments box, and I can even make a video on how to like basically set up XSplit. But XSplit has a great tool on their website for how to do that. XSplit.com. But I feel like this needs a step-by-step -step guide on how to do something like this. So, what we're going to do, first to set up your stream, um, you're going to want to go to View. We're going to go through every one of these tabs. Resolution. 1280 by 720, 720p HDTV video. That's what you want. That's a good aspect ratio. It's a big widescreen. Because if you go to Scale Viewport, you go to Actual. That's how, like, that's huge, right? Now that looks ugly because you see a billion of them. But, um... That's the HD quality video resolution for XSplit. Uh, 720p, it is 1280 by 720. Next, you're going to want to go down to frame rate. You're not going to want to go below 29.97. Actually, I think that's a solid number. 30, I, I don't know the difference between 29.97 and 30. I don't notice it. But every guide that you'll read will tell you 29.97 is a great balance between performance and what you can see. Because above that you're not going to notice any difference and it's going to cost a lot more CPU power and below that you're going to notice a difference and it's not worth the CPU power that it costs so go with 29.97 for a good clean picture transition I don't mess with this page fade is a, just a very good transition it's professional you can go with clock or you could do whatever you want um, it's kind of like the kid in middle school high school who made the powerpoints with like the typewriter noises or like the quirky transitions like it's it's cute but it's not professional and you don't really care about it so leave that there transition speed 500 milliseconds I've never messed with that because when I switch scenes I just want them to switch right like I don't want it to be like a four second like fade projector um I don't know what this tab is I have two monitors so there might not even be two options for people with one monitor so just leave that alone and in scale viewport this is where you can make the actual window of XSplit bigger I have mine at 70% if you set it to 10% it goes really small um, as you can kinda see right there so you wanna keep it when you're actually streaming when I'm streaming I keep it at 10% because it's less CPU intensive but when I'm like doing these videos or setting up my scenes I bring it up to 70 or, or um, 50 sometimes just depending on how big the actual object I'm messing with is. So that's the view tab. The next on the broadcast tab, um, I can't actually show you this so I'm gonna I made a Google Doc PowerPoint and I'm gonna bring it over here in a second. But you're gonna want to go to your broadcast tab and since we're working with the local recording, 
you're going to want to right click local recording so you would right click it and then it's going to tell me I can't edit that while it's streaming right but actually what will happen is something like this will come up and what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to set your preset and I wrote it down here in case you couldn't see um, but you're going to want to set your preset to X split default but at the very end of that you're going to want to add the AND symbol X col semicolon B frames semicolon zero and what that does, XSplit and YouTube don't agree. Funny enough, YouTube has a problem where videos uploaded from XSplit have this gray, the first like 10 frames are gray. And it's horrendous, right? And I told myself there is no way I'm ever uploading any of this with that gray there. And then on the XSplit forums, somebody posted that. So if you want, that's what you put in there if you want to avoid the gray. I highly recommend it because it's ugly. But yeah, um, codec in the top right hand corner, that's grayed out for me by default. I don't really have an option with that. So I leave it alone and don't ask questions. Quality set to 10. Um, this is where things start to get dependent on your internet connection, but because we're doing a local recording, you don't need a good internet connection to do it. And that's what's great. So quality set that to 10. You can set that high, because remember, we have a good processor. Bitrate and buffer, set it to zero, because that's based on how much internet exploits allowed to have. Doesn't matter. You could set it to a thousand and you'd just be wasting internet. So you're going to want to set it to zero. Resolution, default stage resolution, what that would do is change the way that, change the resolution that the picture outputs. And why would you ever want to output the picture in a different resolution than in which you're recording? I think that's weird to me. But resize method, go to default. Um, that's grayed out for me as well, so I don't really have a choice there. Now to audio encoding. I'm a big audiophile in the sense that, not like that I'm like, I heard one little crackle in that sound, buddy, it's over. But if it generally sounds bad, I don't want to listen to it. Um, I listen to all my albums in FLAC, because I just, like if it sounds bad, I don't want to hear it. Like my StarCraft audio, everything when I play is low, except for my uh, audio, which is like high with like, 128 channels or something like that. It's crazy. But so format, um, I set it to 44.100 kilo, kilohertz, gigahertz. I have no idea. 16-bit stereo. The codec is AAA or AAC LC. Um, and then the bit rate, I have it at the highest, 128,000. And then the file type is MP4. I am gonna punch this thing. That's how you set that up. That gives you great audio quality, and that gives you some great video quality. And all right, gonna get that out of the way there. And that's how you do that. That's how you do the broadcast tab. Um, if you need to go back and pause it to, if you need to set it up, go back and pause it to this. Pause it right here. I'll give you a second. All right, there you go. And that's how you're gonna set up that tab. So then, what we're going to do is you're going to want to go to announce. There's nothing there for you to announce. I mean, like, that's if you're announcing to your channel. Nothing to set up there. And then tools. Um, under tools, my recordings and activate delay server, I don't use. Activate delay server is based if you're going to stream and you want the stream to be behind um, your actual recording for stream cheaters, things like that. Tool, my recordings. Um, I believe that just pops open the video to your videos. Yeah. Pops open the folder to your videos. And under general settings, you just set your microphone and stuff like that. Stuff that you should actually set up if you use XSplit in general already. It doesn't actually determine your quality. Other than that, I really don't think there's a lot that you need to know. Um, a 720p video on YouTube will not look good if StarCraft is at low settings. I know I said earlier I play at low settings, but I cast on Extreme and Ultra. So there is, like, you could stream 720p all day, but if there's not a 3D portrait or your SCVs just like look, look like little green blocks, no one's going to care, right? So as we said at the very beginning of the video, you're going to need a decent computer because you need to run SC2 at at least medium settings and then be able to stream at these qualities to be able to get a good 720p picture. I'm big on production value. When tournaments production value sucks, I don't usually watch. Um, 
if it sounds audio quality sucks, I don't usually watch. But hopefully with this video you guys have a little bit more insight now on how to set up XSplit for some 720p quality. Um, and by the way, when you want to start and stop broadcasting, it's really basic, but I'll just say it anyway. Go here and you click the thing you want to start or stop broadcasting to. And I'm going to do that right now. Um, this has been I'm Jermaine, uh, no, I'm not casting SC2. <laughs> this has been I'm Jermaine, um, going through a little bit of a upper advanced, I guess, exploit guide. Middle ground exploit guide. And uh, if you liked it, please thumbs up the video. If you didn't, thumbs it down, I guess, and give me some, criti give me some criticism. Uh, constructively. Constructive criticism. And uh, please subscribe to the channel. I'm going to be doing videos every day now, now that my uh, hard drive is, I got a new one, so there's no problems there. And uh, I really hope you all have a great uh, Saturday. Is it Saturday? Yeah, it's Saturday. Alright, have a great day. Bye-bye.